welcome back to my vlog. Today is my third day in Senegal, and so far we've been spending most of our time around this area and here on the SEAL compound, uh, interviewing locals, interviewing the different missionaries that work here, and learning about the culture. One of the things I enjoyed most about uh, traveling to Guinea with Steve last year, and then also now traveling here in Senegal with Steve, is getting to have a more, um, I don't want to say natural, but yeah, natural or local experience of the city. The ship is a culture of its own, and most of my life has been spent in that culture, understanding and adapting and experience a multiple or a variety of cultures within one place. Um, and I've loved that and it's amazing. But with that amazing gift of living on the ship also meant that I didn't always experience the culture of the country we were docked in um, as well as I would have liked to. I mean, we always do to a degree, but uh, the cool thing about being here in Senegal right now, living on land, is I get to experience the different customs and traditions and languages. And I mean, every night Steve and I are like walking the streets, looking for street food, sitting in little shacks and talking with the locals in our broken French and eating the local food and, and just just getting to experience the country in a new way without being attached to a giant ship which I love but is quite of a quite a bold statement and all and the 400 people living on it uh, when you're not attached to that you kind of get to experience uh, the people and the culture in a new way in an exciting way and so that's been really cool and I'm just excited to meet with families and singles and couples and from all different tribes and ages and backgrounds and um, yeah learn from them I think that's what Steve and I have been talking about uh, the importance of learning and coming as a learner into new cultures. It's really easy to uh, come into a foreign culture thinking that like we have the answers, our way is right, and we're here maybe, especially when you're connected to like a, an organization, like a nonprofit or an organization that's coming to bring aid work, it's easy to fall into the mindset of like, well, we're here to help, so you need to learn from us, when that's really not the case at all. I mean, we have so much to learn from the people here when it comes to the, the richness of their faith and their culture and relationships and, and hospitality. I'm learning so much. Um, and I hope to continue to share that with you as we go about. So thanks for continuing to come on the journey with me and let's see where the days take us. <laughs> So we bought these on the road. They're 100 seifa each. Which is how the much? The packet. Uh, well, 500 seifa is a dollar. Ah, okay. So it's less than a quarter. Muslims will eat these when they break the fast uh, for the day. They would break this open and eat that because I believe Muhammad did that at the end of breaking his fast. So that's oh. what Muslims do today. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I gotta so try one, I'm going to break this open and try one. Break the fast. Wait, let's do it over here because <laughs> I don't want to do it in front of you. You want to try one? Yeah. Alright. Okay. Do you, is there like a seed in it? Yeah. Ready? I should have. The fast is broken! Mmm. 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 
Very good. That was good. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. So Steve just went out to find some food and um, just some food along the streets. They have like little vendors and stuff. And he came back with this and told me inside this bag is an animal's heart. And like, okay. I know you're all probably thinking right now, of course it's not an animal heart. How could you fall for that? But I did. And the thing is, it's because you don't know Steve Schwinn. <laughs> you don't know the things he finds. He, I've eaten live caterpillars, well not live caterpillars, but caterpillars that he bought live and then cooked, and fish head, and a whole bunch of other crazy, uh, like little bugs that were grilled, and other crazy things. And I'm not saying it's bad. They've all been actually surprisingly pretty good, except the caterpillars. Those weren't my favorite. But still, how was I to know this wasn't a cow's heart. That scared me, genuinely, for a second. But then I realized, or then he told me, <laughs> it's actually just a bag of ginger and some type of root. I can't remember what he said, but it's just like a juice <laughs> that I can drink. So I'm gonna open this up and see what this tastes like. I feel like this is something out of Vampire Diaries. So we're on our way to the uh, African Renaissance Monument, which uh, was uh, built in, or not built, but erected in 2010 to uh, commemorate Senegal's 50 years of independence from France. It's the tallest country in Africa, but there's a lot of debate about whether this was a good thing or a bad thing. So we'll talk about that when we get there, which is pretty soon. I think, oh, it's the ocean. I haven't seen the ocean. Okay, so we've arrived at the statue. It was kind of hard to find. Just kidding. It's like massive. And we're about to go up. How many stairs would you say, Steve? Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't even want to. Look how many stairs there are. Imagine. <laughs> we're about to go up several hundred stairs, I'd okay. say. Okay, so the statue I was saying has a lot of controversy because it was um, built by President Wade, who at the time wanted to build it to basically to be a symbol of African freedom. He said that it wasn't just for Senegal, it was a, a symbol of how Africa is entering the 21st century, they're ready to stand on their own. Oh my gosh, so many stairs. Um, so it had good intentions, but unfortunately there was a lot of pushback because the statue's huge. It cost uh, $27 million and um, a lot of uh, people protested it because they said it was not... Let me just stop for a second. <laughs> Whoa! Because <laughs> um, they said it wasn't a good use of the money when there's so much poverty around uh, the statue and there was a lot of debate because it turned out there was this whole scandal where the Senegalese architect turned out to be like Romanian and then the statue, though designed for Africa, was actually built by a North Korean company and that had a lot of pushback because uh, it's supposed to symbolize Africa, African freedom and uh, a lot of people said that the people don't even look African. Their faces do but they said the bodies look very cartoon-like and um, a lot of Muslim people were very uh, upset because there's a lot of nudity so anyways it's a cool like either way it brings up some good questions because we want to respect that countries don't want to just focus on survival. They want to thrive. They want to create beautiful things and honor their history. But at the same time, was it the right time to build it when so many people are struggling who live right below the statue? It's hard to say. So many steps, guys. I think we're at 180. Steve, you beat me! 200 steps! 200 steps for liberty! <sighs> okay, I read somewhere that this is taller than the Statue of Liberty, people. So that's cool, wow. It's not the most attractive angle from down here.
Muslim leaders at the time they were in the streets saying that this is against the philosophy of Islam mm. because Islam do not accept rep human representations. Mm. Mm. But the president said, the former president said that he did not do this as a Muslim. Mm. He did it as a, someone who has an inspiration. Yeah. This, this is artwork. This is not religious work. Mm. This, is, this is art. Mm. What you can, the freedom you can have with uh, as a, as an artist is not the same. What you can do as a Muslim, yeah. you know, when yeah. you are artist, you are free. You are, you can do a lot of things. It was the explanation he gave. Okay, we just got done with our tour. We were up there in the the crown of that guy. It's so tall. You, I can't even show it all. I was actually really nervous. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> it was really high. Um, super interesting to learn the history and the different tribes and wow I've never seen anything like this in West Africa before and it makes sense since it's the tallest statue in Africa so that's pretty neat at one point the tour guide was actually explaining that the direction that the statue is facing is specific and it's facing the Statue of Liberty in New York so it's like face to face with the Statue of uh, Freedom and Liberty uh, for America now we're heading down the 200 steps. Bye! I just met like 50 children. And now we're gonna head to find some more people to uh, interview about what it means to be Senegalese. <laughs>